Urinary tract infections represent um, an important topic for pediatricians, and this is because of a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, because they are quite common. 8% of uh, girls and 2% of boys will develop a urinary tract infection within the, their first seven to eight years of life. Uh, a number of these infections will be accompanied by fever. And fever represents to us a quite important sign because usually it, uh, um, it is a sign of uh, the uh, kidney par renal parenchymal involvement. Uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, uh, the, the, those are the infections who are most worried uh, to us as a pediatrician. Uh, usually uh, the urinary tract and the kidneys are germ-free. When uh, a bacteria enters the urinary tract, uh, uh, a number of situations can develop. We could have uh, asymptomatic bacteriuria, which is not a disease. It doesn't represent a situation, a worrying situation. And really what is quite very important to say, this is a situation that uh, we uh, uh, do not have to treat. It's not necessary to use antibiotic. We could have cystitis. We could have uh, uh, febrile urinary tract infections, which is, uh, which is represent uh, the synonymous of acute pyelonephritis. The um, most important uh, mechanism of defense uh, from bacteria, from infection of the urinary tract, is the urinary flow, which goes from uh, up to down. And uh, in this situation, the most common bacteria which uh, produce uh, urinary tract infections is uh, E. coli. And the reason is because it, it has got fimbria, it attaches to, to the urepithelium, and uh, it is able to ascend the urinary tract against the urinary flow. And uh, that's uh, uh, the reason why we, I call it as uh, the spider bacteria, uh, which is very different from all the other bacteria, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Proteus, which uh, do not have uh, uh, fimbria and therefore they are not able to adhere to uh, the uroepithelium. And when we see a child with an infection which is different from E. coli, we really have to think that uh, with uh, uh, some, uh, uh, w in a more important way, that there could be an underlying urinary tract malformation because a pseudomonas is not able to uh, get to, 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 to uh, the kidney without a, f a favoring situation and uh, like as a major degree of vesicoureteral reflex. Uh, uh, we need uh, to make a precise diagnosis of uh, urinary tract infection and this is made with urine analysis and urine culture. We need to treat with antibiotic these children and most of these children can be treated orally. IV treatment is necessary only for a tiny minority of children, those children who are severely ill, dehydrated, and need to be admitted. Once the treatment is performed, we need to decide what kind of imaging these uh, children deserve. And uh, nowadays, most of the guidelines recommend a less aggressive imaging. They recommend generally to perform to our children an ultrasound, and if the ultrasound is normal and the UTI is typical, there is no need for other investigation. If the ultrasound is abnormal or there are atypical signs of infections uh, such as non E. coli infections, uh, it is recommended to perform a VCUG in order to diagnose a high-grade reflex. Uh, once the, the, the reflex is diagnosed, we need to decide what is necessary to do. Surgery nowadays uh, has a secondary uh, uh, place in this situation. Most of the ch these children are treated with antibiotic prophylaxis for a long period, but most of the guidelines recommend either not to treat these children or to treat these children just with uh, just only those children with a high-grade reflex.